Hello, my name is Ice Warrior, and this is the second part of the three-part series on how to fly better at Heroes and Generals. As mentioned on the first video, this is gonna be mostly based on group-to-group -group combat, but first we are starting up with a one versus two situation here. Enemies were of course following here the transport plane, so I do get an easy kill here first one. There you go, and now I will go chase after the second one. He comes after me, and we start turn fighting here. First pass, neither one of us gets any good shots in, so we both pull hard. He actually flies straight for a while. I have no reason why he did this, so I do get an easy hit there. I should have actually gained the kill there. I, I don't understand how did I miss so bad. It, of course, happens every now and then. But anyways, I do repair the situation by actually shooting him down there. There you go. Actually killed the pilot before the plane, but it happens. So, another two kills for the start of the show. I'm gonna head back and plan is to repair here at C1. I do actually get some weird mouse lag here, but it does uh, not hinder me too badly. I'll just return to the uh, C1 and go land there. It's actually, um, I'm gonna show a couple of landing places if you're still unfamiliar with some good ones. Uh, at least all the first places on the map, so C1, B1, A1, Echo 1, Delta 1, so forth, or all are excellent landing places. I usually just prefer C1 over every, every other, since the field is big and where you landing area, where I landed just now, is uh, pretty well covered from the enemy. So I can actually stay here hidden for a bit and get the plane ready and then have a large area to take off from. And of course the right flank here is covered with trees, so even your takeoff is protected, uh, visually protected from the center of the map. I don't actually hear takeoff immediately, as you saw, there was a little dot on the horizon there. I was fearing for the enemy to see me, so I decided to stop and not make any movement, as movement does usually help out the enemy to see you more easier. Uh, another big thing is, of course, on the team fighting or in the now situation 1v2 is to usually surprise one of the enemy and then try to kill him before the second one gets to help him. Uh, I will. I'm retreating here in this direction actually simply because I was still trying to check out if the mouse lag is back or not and then r r repair the APCR, of course, re ammo myself. Uh, Flying only with AP is possible, and I do it quite a lot just to add the challenge. But usually, in when there is multitude of opponents, it's excellent to have both guns up so you can get that quick kill. So as we saw, there is a paraplane went down in front of us, so we can only assume there is plane somewhere nearby. So we're gonna dive in and go see what we can see. There must be some somewhere, so it's worth investigating. Uh, another big thing with the planes, of course, is that if you see one, y usually there is the second one somewhere nearby. So whenever you engage one enemy pilot, do engage both, or think it as uh, engaging the both of the planes. Uh, another big thing is that I didn't hear C that there would be a second plane, so I choose to go up. This would be, of course, suicidal if the enemy plane, the second enemy plane, would be somewhere nearby. That would be basically guaranteed kill for the enemy. I didn't ch see the enemy anywhere, so I chose to do this. This is a relatively effective way to fight single opponents. And even if the enemy is in duos AK, or are like almost uh, next to each other, wing wingtip to wingtip, then that works too. Basically, you just want to evade the enemy the best way the scenario allows. Here I'm getting a little bit shot by the AA, and this AA actually is gonna be a death to me in a moment. Not quite the way you might think, but we will see here. I'm almost stalling speed, so I'm having trouble to keep the nose up. There you go. It was really big angle there. So and I'm diving in. A smart pilot, who is not me in this case scenario, would go back to base and just repair, because we have one enemy plane still in the air. You will see it on the top right flashing in a couple of seconds. 
There you go, you see him on the top right. I'm gonna instead go against this AA gun, actually with that bomb completely. I don't understand how did I miss it, but it happens. So this is a catastrophe, as I have to hit the deck to avoid the AA fire, as I'm low health already. And this Astro Strikes, I have two guys behind me now. This is a death sentence, no matter what. There's, there's absolutely nothing I can do anymore. I'm dead, so I go a little fancy, maybe I force one of them to crash or something else. Well, that didn't happen in this case, sadly. And uh, I hit the tip of the wing, hit the ground, and I, I died there. Maybe you could have survived with the AC or BF-109, but uh, eventually I would have been shot down simply because of the two planes. Even if you shake one of them, the second one will get you. And uh, only way to recover from that is to spawn again. We actually do have another pilot here. This is going to be turning up in 3v3 relatively quickly. So what we have here is going to be a 2v2. Excuse me, 2v3, which is going to turn into 2v2 real quickly. There you go, so you saw one plane crashing there. Axi guy there. I guess got shut down. There you go, now I'm engaging the first one. I don't actually hear care. You saw some shots going over my shoulder. I didn't care whether they were on or not, because there's no point for me to take uh, evasive maneuvers, because the second one uh, would have either killed me anyway, and I've lost a kill, or, in the case of me dodging effectively, the first guy who I was actually engaging would have just turned and killed me. So there is always the point that do try to do every instead of breaking off, try to kill a target you're fighting. This is of course scenarios to scenario based. Sometimes it's more effective to actually stop the chase and just run away and let your wingman handle the guy behind you. But it always risks the scenario where the guy you were chasing kills your wingman instead and then you both are dead. Uh, so I usually prefer on killing the target and then hoping to god the wingman doesn't fuck up. Again here, face to face contact. I go up, he goes left, I get the bounce on him here. Hard pull and I get behind him. And I get some shots in of course, a little bit of shots in. Could have turned a little bit harder so I could hit the cockpit. Cockpit is usually an excellent place to hit. Usually kill the plane and if you get lucky you might kill the pilot too and get him back in the air quickly as possible, of course. There you go, I keep turning, 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 we both are turning. This is a pretty risky maneuver usually on uh, 3v3, but it's still one of the most effective ones. Either you have to break off, which is always risky, as the guy you broke off will just start chasing you instead. But here I got a little lucky and the enemy uh, teammates didn't retaliate or anything. Here I stopped chasing simply because I was afraid of the teammates, so I'm flying to fly off. He blows up on the trees, and I survive with only one bar of HP left. Gone. So, I'm gonna fly again towards the Alpha line. I have no rush here. I know I have my bombs reloading, so that I can get the APC up if I'm gonna have to use it. A big thing of my style of combat is, of course, I will try to stay on the back line. I'll uh, try not to be uh, near D1 even when I have teammates, simply because I don't want the situation that if teammates go for ground attack instead of helping me out, I don't want to be alone. So instead of I stay back and see if the teammates are in trouble and go help them out. And then, of course, occasionally I go pick up some airplanes so I can get some XP while waiting. You see the teammates are very low altitude. I don't do this at all. Uh, okay, maybe at all is a bad word, but I try to avoid this as best as, my ca as I can, as long as there is any planes up in the air. This is simply because every plane you lose, there's a bigger chance that your team will lose when you have out of planes. And of course, it's very risky to go ground level if the enemies bounce on you. There you go, another beautiful kill. He was trying to chase our friend here and uh, we got an easy kill during his turn. There is another plane after the paraplane actually this time, so we're gonna go give chase and then give up the chase immediately since we see there's two teammates after him already, so we don't have to do here anything, so I'm just gonna instead go kill the paraplane while waiting again. This is now a 4 versus 2, as one of the enemy pilots decided to quit at this point. 
So I'm shooting the power plane down and see if the, I can find more enemies. This is usually the situation that most players actually start hitting the ground instead of flying against the enemy air. Um, I would say it's okay if you think you will survive, but there's always the risk that you run out of planes if the AA fire is effective even at some point. Uh, some level simply because um, every plane you lose when you have five pilots means that you have less um, pilots to fight against the enemy and of it usually ends up in a scenario where your ground attack aircrafts actually lose the game since they lose all the planes while you are with the one two deaths and uh, just hoping to get another plane but they're sadly out at that point that's something you can't of course do anything about but uh, there we get in another situation. He flies past me. I'm gonna chase him. Both pull up the enemy. Our teammate goes for actually for the paraplane and dies for it. Uh, and the enemy followed there. Our friend, of course, survived because I could get there some little help on him. And for that, I guess you could call that steal also stealing the paraplane from him. Maybe I don't know. Could it be called it? Don't know. Anyway, as a little recap, I would write, like to remind: don't do upward turns when you don't know where the second. If you don't know the second plane's exact location or exactly where it is, uh, especially if it's close by and you know you're fighting, then it's very bad to do upward turns. If you know that you are fighting one v one, upward turn is excellent. And stalling maneuvers, everything like that, that's really good on one v one. But if there's a second one enemy affecting the fight then it's very bad, usually turn downwards. Uh, another thing is stay up, stay fighting up uh, in high altitudes, so you have plenty of space to maneuver. Third one uh, of course is don't try to attack ground attack uh, if you don't have to. As saw on, uh, on my fight there I was trying to get the AA gun, it failed, I had to hit the deck, one versus two, insta death. Um, Another thing is keep switching your airfields because there's two enemies, there's a good chance that one of them is alive and if you always land on the same place there's a chance that you get killed. There actually is a good um, point from the part one actually, you saw the lightning ram in the BF-109, he actually survived that. That is usually pretty hard to do by the with the BF-109 and Yaks, usually you end up dying on those rams so you need to be really careful there. Lightning survived, he probably took like two-thirds of the, his health with that ram, but he did survive. Well done by him for surviving, although the uh, kill there was a little unnecessary. And that concludes part two. The next part will be mostly for uh, air-to-ground attack. And we will concentrate how to kill tanks effectively and how to avoid and abuse the AA gun system. And thus, second part concludes. Comment below or on the forums, links in the description.